Turn to page 363. And with all of these questions, you would be given, like I said, any equation with exponential functions, logarithmic functions, compound interest, you are going to get lots of word problems in this unit, and you will always be given the formula. So that means they could come up with any situation that exists in real life that has an exponential formula and later on a logarithmic formula. This one has to do with atmospheric pressure. This is the formula for atmospheric pressure, and they would tell you that P is the pressure, and K is the number of kilometers above sea level. So if the cabin pressure in an airplane is less than 70 kilopascals, passengers can suffer from altitude sickness. Altitude sickness is what you feel when you go so high up that the air is thinner and your body's not getting enough oxygen. I've only had it happen to me once. I was in a bus going up a mountain. And the higher I got up in the mountains, this is this was really high mountains. It was in South America in the Andes Mountains. All of a sudden in the middle of the night, I started sweating and I was climbing. I was like, I'm feeling like I could not breathe, that I wasn't getting enough oxygen, and I was having altitude sickness. So, kind of crazy, because in, I lived a year in Bolivia, and Bolivia has the Andes Mountains. One of the capitals of Bolivia, Bolivia has two capitals, which is kind of weird. One of the capitals in Bolivia is La Paz, and the airport in La Paz is the highest airport in the world. So I was flying, this time I didn't get altitude sickness, surprisingly. Because lots of time they actually have an altitude sickness bay in the airport. Because people get off the plane and then start fainting and getting sick because they are they don't have enough oxygen. But the crazy thing about the pressure change is I flew from one city, which was about 250 meters above sea level, which is pretty normal. I don't know what Winnipeg is, but like 500 meters above sea level. And you fly up to La Paz, and the airport is at about 4,000 meters above sea level, or four kilometers. To put that in perspective, I think there's only a couple of mountain peaks in all of North America that are higher than that. Most of the Rocky Mountains, the very tips of them, are not higher than the La Paz airport. Now, the airport's not on a mountain peak. It's not like you're like, woo, just perfect. It's completely flat up there, but it's super hot. And as a result of being so high, when you change from 250, where there's a lot of pressure, to high up where there's no pressure, like I wear contacts, my contacts bottle was like this. It was just like shaking almost. It was like as soon as you open it up, it because the air inside was sealed at a lower pressure. I had pens where you looked at the pen and the ink was getting pushed out of the pen because the pressure just in the ink on the cartridge was like, I can't handle this. It was pushing ink out. Your toothpaste, you'd open up your toothpaste and it was like kind of cool because it just felt squeeze itself onto your toothbrush. And the same thing happened when I flew back. When I flew back to the low thing, all of the things I had were like perfectly like the air was sucked out of them. And so if you get, not very often that you can go to two places that are very different in height. And it used to be that the Bolivian soccer team would try to win games by inviting Brazil and say, we're going to play the game in our capital. And all the Brazilians would get sick and wouldn't know how to run very well because there was no oxygen up there. And the Bolivian team had been training up there and trying to use it to their advantage. I think now they're not allowed to do that anymore. Yeah, Colorado can hide. So, anyways, so you can suffer if it is less than 70. So if we put in 70 in here for this.
percent and 101.3 and 0.88 to the k. And we solve for this. Well, 0.88 is not on. Here's our powers chart. If we wanted to do this without a calculator, we'd have to use our powers chart. But I'm pretty sure that 0.88 isn't on our powers chart. So right now, before we learn logarithms, all we can do is type this into y1 and this into y2 and find out where those graphs intersect. So if we clear these out, in y1 I'm going to put 70, in y2 I'm going to put that 101.3 and in brackets 0.88 to the exponent of x. Again, what do I need to see? When I type in 70, that's a horizontal line of 70. I probably don't need to go up to 3,000 then. Probably up to 100 will be enough. Okay? Currently, my x max was at 20, because I think the last thing we did was figure out people's ages when that person was 17 years old or something. So we can leave it at 20 and see, do we need to make a change? No. They intersect and we can see it on our graph. But if we couldn't see it on our graph, we might have to change our window for x. I can now go second, calculate where do these intersect. Enter, enter, enter. 2.891, three decimal places. Just under three kilometers, which is just under 3,000 meters. Does it ask around it to the nearest? Oh, to the nearest kilometer, so I lose. A rounding error for not rereading my question if I hadn't reread it. So just under three kilometers, and I think the La Paz Airport is at around four kilometers. That's crazy. You can already suffer altitude sickness at three kilometers above sea level, and that whole city is at around four kilometers above sea level. What's that? Right, but what is the, like, what's cruising altitude? It's not much higher than that. It kind of felt like when I flew there, it kind of felt like, and we've reached cruising altitude, and we stopped. Like, and it's weird because you're like flying and there's like mountain peaks that are like right beside you because you don't need to fly that high. But they're still so weird. Is that a good question? We, we should... I will Google that for you guys. Okay, questions for practice on this one? 14. 